welcome everyone to our Easter Sunday celebration for April 12, 2020 at St. John's Presbyterian Church in Toronto. We're delighted that we have with us this morning our music director, Mrs. Grace Hahn, and I, if you don't know me, I'm the Reverend Maureen Walter, the minister at St. John's, and my husband, Richard Johnson, is also taking part in the service. Thank you everyone for joining us uh, online while we remain in social distance isolation with COVID-19. We'll open our call, our service with our call to worship. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Lord, we praise you. The cross is vacant and the tomb is empty. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Praise the Lord. Let, Let us, us worship, worship God. God. We'll begin with our opening prayer. Let us pray together. On this Easter Sunday, O oh Lord, we give you thanks for the miracle of resurrection, for the joy with which we find you celebrate new life and new promises. We know that we can put fear behind us, that we no longer have to look for the Jesus who was crucified. He was not here, for he has been raised. Alleluia. Glorious Lord of life, by the mighty resurrection of your Son, you overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new. Grant that we who celebrate with joy Christ's rising from the dead may be raised from the death of sin to the life of righteousness. Through he who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now one God and forever. Amen. And be assured on this day of all days that we are a forgiven people, that we are a people of life, and that God celebrates this life with us. Today is a new beginning for each of us. Amen. <coughs> We're going to read our um, Easter reading. These services are prepared in support of Presbyterian World Service and Development, who does relief and development work all over the world, and whom we want to um, very much support. And the services this year have been written by the Reverend Iona McLean. We're going to have the services um, held in front of the camera so that any of you who might like to join in can. God raised Jesus on the third day. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Let us take our tambourines and dance. Christ is risen. Alleluia. With the risen one in our midst, the graveyard becomes a garden. Grief turns to gladness, tears to laughter. There is a new creation. With the risen one in our midst, life defeats death, life overcomes hatred, hope replaces fear. This is the good news of the gospel. Christ is risen. We are risen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Creator God, in raising Jesus from the dead, you have made the world brand new. We praise you with joy and thanksgiving. May we live as Easter people, bringing life, love, and hope to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
At this time, I have asked my husband, if he, Richard Johnson, if he will read the scripture for us. The Old Testament reading today is from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 1 through 6. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love, therefore I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again I will build you, and you shall be built. O virgin Israel, again you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. The Gospel reading is from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuna, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. It occurs to me that uh, when we are in church together, I usually speak to the 
children for a minute or two. So even though we're not together, let me just say a brief word to the children. I like that reading in Jeremiah because it's a time when people are limited and they can't go where they want to go. And God, through the prophet Jeremiah, prophesies and promises that there will come a time when they'll be able to go to parties again. And I think that's a, a wonderful thing to remember. No matter how we feel a little bit limited and confined at the moment, it's not forever. We can uh, fortunately get together online this way, but the time will come when we will be able to celebrate in person again. So that's a good promise to hold on to. Let's pray. May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Amen. Today we speak of the resurrection. Jesus, celebrated by everyone only one week earlier, has been executed. His death was painful and public. His family has stood around the foot of the cross, hoping to offer what comfort they could in his final hours. Finally, he breathed his last, and his friends were allowed to take him down from the cross, anoint and wrap his broken body, and lay him in a new grave. His friends went home. Next morning, Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb so early that the day is still dark. When she arrives, the stone blocking the entrance has been rolled away. Seeing this, Mary sets out on a run to get Simon Peter and the beloved disciple, telling the two that Jesus' body has been removed from the tomb and she does not know where he has been laid. The three of them rush back to the grave together. As the beloved disciple bends down to look into the tomb, Peter goes right in. Both of them see the discarded linen wrapping and the cloth that had wrapped Jesus' head, neatly rolled up and put to the side. The beloved disciple, seeing the discarded linen, believes. They did not yet fully understand, but the disciple believes. The two, Peter and the beloved disciple then return home, leaving Mary behind. Weeping, Mary bends down to look into the tomb. Sitting at either end of where the body had been, she sees two angels who ask her why she is weeping. They have taken away my Lord, she explains, and I do not know where they have laid him. When Mary turns around, a man is standing there. Mary does not recognize him. The man asks her why she is weeping. Who are you looking for? He asks. She thinks he's the gardener. Sir, if you have taken him away, please tell 
me where you have put him, she responds, and I will take him away. Mary, Jesus says. Rabuni, she exclaims, teacher. Do not hold on to me, Jesus tells her, because I am not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them. So Mary returns to the disciples and announces, I have seen the Lord. The story is full of details. Who stood where? Who ran fastest? Who said what? It is the account of a stupendous occurrence, that first moment when a new reality dawns. We remember the big moments in life, the moments that change everything. For example, I vividly recall the phone call from the doctor's office confirming that I was expecting my first child. I remember the time of day, the weather, what I was wearing, what I was doing, the exact words that were said. I was so happy. And I understood what a momentous change was beginning in my life. But I also had no clue. Thirty years later, I have a much better understanding of what that news really meant. This Easter Sunday moment is a bit like that. A huge piece of news that changes everything. Yet we see in those first moments how the knowledge that Jesus had risen is brand new. No one yet knows exactly what it means. That remains to be seen. But one thing Mary is solid on. She has seen the Lord. She has spoken to Jesus. She knows that is good. Every detail of the story will be told again and again. We do not have to understand the full consequences to know it is news of great joy and vast importance. We know it changes everything, even if we do not fully know how much that change will be. Today, April 12th, 2020, we celebrate Easter like we have never imagined celebrating it before. Our churches are empty. Our choirs are at home. Our ministers preach to unseen congregations or mail out sermons. We pray in our own rooms. If we go to the trouble of preparing an Easter dinner, we eat it with the company of those we are isolating with. When we cannot gather, does Easter happen? The answer is resounding. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Easter came first to one person. Mary, standing alone with the angels behind her, met the resurrection without a community beside her. We too meet Christ at Easter, whether we are alone or not. The isolation of social distancing does not separate us from the power of the risen Lord. The power of resurrection means death is ended and life rules. It 
does not mean we rush into the streets, but it does mean that we choose our actions from love, not from fear. We need not fear death. God will be with us in this world and in the next. That is the message of the risen Christ. Rather than fear, we choose our actions from love. We self-isolate for a while longer that more people may survive to celebrate another Easter on this side of the grave. One estimate I read this week suggests hopeful figures. Self-isolating and social distancing lessens the immediate death toll by as much as 85,000 people in Ontario alone. Those are the estimates. Most people who contract the virus will survive, but slowing down the spread allows for more effective medical treatment and allows many more people to live to see another day. And that's how we choose from love and not from fear. Meanwhile, as we act in love to reduce the suffering of the world, we cling to the promise of resurrection. We live, and God lives with us. We are confident that one day we will gather together in person and sing with joy. We pray to feel God's presence with us here and now. We pray to remember that our contribution to the world, while it may feel like nothing, is a gift of life. God gives us life, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Well, thank you again for joining us online in this service, and I'm very thankful for those people who are making this service possible. I'm delighted to be able to tell you that our Sunday School has been meeting online and continuing uh, their Sunday School lessons, and that's really thrilling. We're excited about that. And we plan to continue having services online as long as is necessary. We don't know exactly when it will be that we'll be able to meet in person. We do know when that happens, we will be joyful and delighted. Uh, this week, we are very thrilled that David and Irene Thompson were able to welcome a new grandson into their family, and uh, soon they hope to be able to actually see their new grandson in person. It's very frustrating, we know, when we can't join each other but if we remember that we're acting from love, it, it seems to help somewhat. Meanwhile, until we get further notice, we're simply continuing uh, to do the best we can to hold each other in prayer, to keep each other in our hearts and prayer, and know that we are united in the body of Christ. Uh, one other little bit of good news that we're really thrilled about we support quite a few missions in our city. One of them is Evangel Hall downtown. And initially Evangel Hall had to close, uh, and they feed a lot of people. Um, but they had to close because of concerns of uh, spreading the virus. They have recently been able to reopen, and they are doing a takeout food option, I believe it's mostly at lunch, and uh, Apparently that's being met with overwhelming gratefulness and is going very, very well. So we hope that if you are able to continue to, to support our congregation here at St. John's uh, financially, if you're able, and also our other missions of the church.
church that, that you would do so. Everybody's feeling the pinch a bit, but if we can contribute together, that is helpful. And uh, one of the easiest ways to do that is simply to mail a check of support uh, to the church here. Um, but uh, our biggest thing is just to hold each other in prayer, to support one another, and to love one another. So to that end, let us pray together. Eternal and ever-blessed God, we rejoice that the grave could not hold your Son, Jesus and that he has conquered death and risen to rule over all powers of this earth. We praise you that Christ summons us into new life to follow him with joy and gladness. We give you thanks that he gave us a new commandment to love one another as you have loved us. We ask that by your Spirit you lift us from death, from doubt, from despair. Wherever we are filled with fear, wherever we feel alone and isolated, we ask that we would feel the presence of your Holy Spirit with us, that we would know your comfort. Set our feet in Christ's holy way. Bless all those who walk with courage and love to help one another. And especially we pray for the medical community, for all those essential workers who keep us going as much as we can. And we ask that you would be with all those who govern, giving them wisdom and insight. And we pray that our lives, even in this time, may be signs of Christ's life. And that we, in all ways, may show Christ's love through our actions, our words, our thoughts, our deeds, so that those who are sad may be comforted, that those who are sick may be healed, and that those who falter may find your strength and your courage. Praise, glory, and thanksgiving to you, our God, forever and ever. And we continue to pray, as we have been taught, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace. From God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each one of you, now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Amen.
Nancy Grace. Thank you.